is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and it's time for Ask Yee. That's where you guys get to call us up, 800-292-5150. And any question you have, I'm here to help. Today we have Rochelle on the line. Hey, Rochelle, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Angela? I'm good, thank you. You have a question today, Rochelle? Yes, I had a tenant that was on Section 8, and mm-hmm. she ended up calling the city inspector on me. For, for during the process of the inspection, my foundation, I had to, my foundation was messed up. Okay. So I'm thinking, should I get the foundation fixed and uh, sell it or keep it? Because I've been having, like, getting bad tenants. So I, maybe I need to do a different process or how I screen my tenant. I haven't been having any luck with that. You said, what was the last thing you said? Oh, uh, about my tenants, screening my tenants and not having good luck with my tenants. Oh, you haven't had good luck with your tenants. Listen... I I understand. I had a situation where I had a tenant who was squatting, not paying the rent um, and, you know, just doing all kinds of things. And that could be difficult. And so I think for you, um, you kind of just have to weigh out the pros and cons. Now, there wouldn't be anything wrong with you seeing what uh, have you had your uh, property assessed to see what the value is in it? Not yet, because I want to get the foundation fixed first. I want to get the most I can get out of it before I even try to look to selling it or keeping it, because I'm looking to try to have extra income for retirement. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, and it's a, it is a lot of work. It, it, yeah. it, it is a lot of work to own property, and I want to say a couple of things here. Number one, um, sometimes. It might be worth it because what if you go through the the trouble of getting the foundation fixed and do all of that, but then sometimes developers want to come in and redo everything, right? Because right, and so then it wouldn't even be worthwhile for you to pay money to do something like that if you were planning to sell it because you don't know somebody may want to buy the property as is. So I would at least try to see what that could be like, so you could weigh out. All right, I could sell it as is for this. Or I could pay X mm-hmm. amount of dollars. Do you know how much it's going to cost to get the foundation fixed? About $15,000. Okay. So you can weigh the pros and cons of that. Because imagine somebody wants to come in and knock it down and do something new. Then maybe it wouldn't even have been worth it. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, I yeah, think I've been I, having offers. People been, I've been having people offer and buy it from me, you know, so. Right. I, I so, don't know which way to go. So it might be worthwhile. Sometimes I think the best thing to do, have you been dealing with a, a real estate professional? No. I would no. try to get somebody and, you know, somebody can come in as a realtor and tell you what your different options are. to So you can weigh out, if I sell this as is, I could get this. Or I could spend $15,000 to get this fixed. And then you can decide if it's worth the return on investment for you. And sometimes it is. People don't talk about the, the part of being a, a landlord. That is difficult. You know, dealing with tenants, trying to get things fixed, trying to get things paid for. You said you want to retire. Maybe this is not something that you want to have to deal with. But you also have to think about capital gains, which means that once you sell this property, if it's worth more than what you pay for it, you will have to pay taxes on capital gains unless you're going to move that money into another property property yeah you know so that's why my advice to you what city are you in i'm in iowa davenport okay my advice to you would certainly be to uh find a great realtor out there who has a good track Mm -hmm. record maybe as a recommendation and that person you can just kind of get an idea from them of what they think based on the comps in the area the building would be worth, if it would be valuable for you to fix it, or if maybe you should perhaps sell it as as is. They might even have clients who are looking for something like that that they want to buy, you know, as is, and then you don't have mm-hmm. to do anything. Or, you know, you can see what other options are available to you. But I think it's really valuable when you have a property to look at every single angle and then just decide for yourself what's best instead of just um, without that information trying to make a decision. Right, right, right. Because I'm at a, I'm at, I don't know what to do. I don't know. Yeah, I I feel like if you can get a great realtor who can come in, a broker, and just give you some advice and tell you your options, that will be way better for you to make a decision once you know the different... There might be things you don't even know are available to you. There might be programs. There might be grants. There might be certain things that you could get that will actually help you Uh that you're you're not even aware of. Right, right. Well, I'll check that out. I'll look into a real real estate company and, and... 
talk to someone about it. And maybe so if I there's anybody listening from, from Davenport, from Iowa, that, you know, want to maybe perhaps hit you up. That could be helpful, too. And again, I always say this, too. Dealing with a broker or a realtor is like a relationship. So it has to be somebody who you trust, somebody who's willing to put the time in and work with you, not somebody who just wants a quick commission. Right. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your your, uh, information. All right. I appreciate you for calling up. And I really uh, wish you luck because I know how stressful that can be when you're trying to figure out what's the best move to make. I know it is stressful. Uh, thank you. Appreciate your time. All right. No problem.